My favorite part of the uh, Zippity Doodah song is how everybody knows it, but nobody talks about the movie it came from. Yeah, it's like one of the most famous Disney songs like ever. Yeah. From probably the most controversial Disney movie ever. At least the most racist. Yeah. Would you like to know what movie that is? Stay tuned for the rest of this reaction. We'll tell you at the end. I guess that works. Is that going to keep people glued to this? I don't know. I think our wonderful personalities will keep people glued to it. So, yeah. What's going on, guys? We're the Cine Fanatics. My name is Chris Adams. And I'm Robert Adams. And today we are here for an inner geekdom match. I feel like we haven't gotten one of these in a minute. It is Eric Zipper versus Adam Plavik. Yeah. So we haven't seen Adam Plavik playing for a while. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Zipper has been in the inner geekdom before. He's gotten his feet wet. But now he's coming back. And the interesting thing of note this time is that uh he's coming in with the backing of the dungeon yeah into the inner geekdom <clears throat> where smets is already ruling this is smets's house that he's entering basically <clears throat> so kaiser's just getting himself a nice backup i mean Not yeah that he needs but... it <laughs> so uh, i'm really interested to see like where this goes what the game plan is what the cutscenes for this potentially could be yeah, especially since we are we have this right now leading up to the Smets versus Kalinowski match at the Collision later this month. So, I mean, I don't know. It's really interesting that Zipper is still wanting to play in Inner Geekdom if he's going to be a part of a team that already has such a dominant Inner Geekdom player. Mm-hmm. That's real interesting. I mean, I understand, like, he's wanting to play teams with Oyama, maybe try a run in the singles. That, all that makes sense. You know, you can have multiple singles players on a on a faction, but to have multiple inner geekdom players kind of vying for that title, I don't know. I don't Again, know. especially with Smets. Yeah, who's making a way towards like total domination of everything inner geekdom. Smashing. Yeah. Uh so I mean that aside, who do you think's gonna win this? <sighs> That's a hard one. See, I think I think Lavic has had more matches in Inner Geekdom than Zipper has. Um, they're both used to the lights by now, so there's not a matter of who's going to get affected by being on the stage. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm going to give it to Lavic just a slight edge, just because I think he's already been playing such high tier levels in Inner Geekdom already. Yeah, I think I think his game is more is stronger and more well honed at this point than. Zippers is. So, I mean, as much as I like Adam Plavik, I'm probably going to side with Zipper just because You want to be different. No, uh, no, not that. Hey, I like Andrew Guy. Guess how that worked out for you. Yeah, go back and watch that last match. Let's see how that one worked out for you, too. So, the reason I'm going to go with Zipper is because he does have the backing of the dungeon, who is already producing someone who is very knowledgeable in inner geekdom. So, therefore, I would assume that Zipper's getting some good coaching, some good tips. That's true. I mean, between Smets and now also Paulo Yama joining, there's some hard players coming into the dungeon. And I think they're producing, essentially, a good product in their competitors. Yeah, especially the way they train. Apparently there's a top secret thing that they, the way they train and study. So, yeah, you know, it, it sounds effective. So maybe maybe he has been uh, learning a little bit while he's there. And KFOB aside, Zipper is also pretty good at his character. So being able to maintain that character while still being able to perform and answer questions, that might be good for him, meaning that he's still a strong enough participant competitor yes kfob yes we know that what fight. is it yeah i don't know what is this kfob business <laughs> everything we see is absolutely real i don't know what you're talking about no clue anyways yeah so let's get into this let's see who's going to come out on top as we uh, get our appetites whetted before the kalinowski smiths inner geekdom match yep let's go voices <laughs> you gotta be honest with you. I'm not sure if I can trust you yet. I wouldn't be with you if you did. Look, it's a long time ago. We have a long history. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, so how's this gonna work? Look, it's gonna be 
based on trust. That's it. No more dope broker. I know, no, no, no. That was a long time ago. I know. I know. I know. Look, I'm here to win. You gotta base this on trust. You gotta trust me. Damn, Riley better be right about this. God damn it. No more dope broker. That's gonna make for some uh, interesting. Nice complete thought there. Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown alongside window painting champion and runner up for manager of the year, Roxy Stryer. I am Mark Baby Carazel. So Stay tuned for the end of this video. You'll find out what the rest of that sentence he was saying was. <laughs> That is true. It's Cheers. So, so close to being the right pronunciation, too. I know we're like representing <laughs> like Austin uh, restaurants, Gus's there. Fried Chicken, Rudy's <laughs> Barbecue. It's all good. Well, Gus's is nationwide. I think Rudy's is also in some places. Oh, that's interesting. Eric Zipper. Very different mission. He kind of went rogue. He dished his buddy Winston after his last matchup. And then you have Eric kind of being hip pocketed by Kaiser. So he's not really represented by Kaiser. Kaiser's not his manager, but he's just kind of like maybe playing the puppet master from afar with Eric's career. It seems like Eric wants more shots at corruption than he necessarily does winning any sort of belt. And you can't let that blind you. You have to focus on the belts, and this has happened so many times in this league where you just get sidetracked, and I don't know if it's going to be beneficial for him in the long run. I wonder if she's talking about. so short-sighted on this one. That's right, and, and Eric, a guy who you don't expect that kind of behavior hmm. from, but that's the Eric that we're getting, so we don't know what kind of zip we're going to see on the stage today. We know what we're getting with Adam. He's an all-time inner geekdom player. He's a beloved figure here in the movie trivia showdown. And they did a pre-interview. Let's take a look at that right now. <clears throat> I'm in a whole new frame of mind. We pretend to be heroes, but going off on his teammate, I don't understand what that means. I'm so tired of being unappreciated and underplayed in this league. I was going to be the new leader of Corruption. That's what you said. You said you said I was a future star of this league. What is wrong with you people? I'm here to get to Mike Kalinowski. I'm going to win matches until I can see the look on that smug son of a face when I finally beat him. It's been a minute since I've been here, since I fought. Last time I had a really good match against Rachel Cushing. That went pretty much more or less as I sort of expected it was going to go. And as far as Adam Lava goes, he ain't going anywhere. And I like you guys. I've been trying to get back and interdict him for a while now. I mean, Kaiser's a shady guy. I don't necessarily trust him, but he said he was going to get me matches, and I'm here to here to make a scene. I can get things done in this team. I was supposed to face Jerry Habon who I'm a little familiar with, Eric Zipper. Sorry, man, I've uh, never heard of you. Whoever it is, I'm, I'm all in 100% on whatever Christian throws at me. I am one and one going into this match, and I feel like if I beat Adam, who is a respected player in the league, then that puts me on the map. I don't think there's anyone that I wouldn't be willing to go up against. We know that in that fatal four-way, there's gonna be Chance. Chance Ellison is an inner geek to know. I would love to see the look on that guy's face after I wipe the floor with him. Ooh, facing Kalinowski again. I wouldn't mind that. That'd be a lot of fun. He really brought he brought that good game the last time I faced him. But, uh, you know, sort of see how things would change this, this time around. Chance, Mike, corruption. I don't care. I am coming for you. I don't care whether it's an inner kingdom, whether it's in teams. My match with Adam today, <clears throat> it's a stepping stone. You know, I'm here to win. And then I'm coming for you. Look, I feel like this league is filled with one too many bad guys. So I'm excited at eradicating any sort of evil that's necessary out of this league. So Eric Zipper, as much as you think you want to and can beat me, I think you've got something else coming today. Kind of like the storyline this is taking. This is more of like Zipper just wanting to hurt corruption rather than just going for a belt. Yeah, I like those smaller storylines. I think they really work well for the Schmodown right now where it's just one person's vendetta against... Maybe a handful of other people. Yeah. Adam, he just stands up. He's classy. He's the guy that I want standing on top of a tall building overlooking the city. Zipper, 
What the hell's going through this guy's mind, Rox? I, I honestly don't know. I think it's uh, revenge. It's anger. It, it, like I said, short-sighted. He, he's not looking towards the future. And I like that image of Flavik on a on a rooftop. He, he's kind of guy look, look, look good with like a billowing cape. Yeah. Kind of so Some kind you, of mask. If you're looking at this from a manager standpoint, right? I mean, and you're, I can see let's, it. Let's put you, and I hate to do this to you, but put you in the shoes of Kaiser. What is he looking at? with an Eric Zipper, is he is he considering taking him on? Or is this just kind of him playing with the inner geek league? Because we know Kaiser does enjoy his share of power. Listen, I don't think it's right what he's doing. I think he's testing Zipper right now. And if you want him, take him. What are you doing? Just testing the waters. I, I think it puts Zipper in a bad position too, because now he has to compete for the love of a manager. I don't think it's fair. Well, he did Basically holding tryouts. This matchup in the inner That's fine. Realm, and this is something that Eric's wanted for yeah. a long time. Eric currently ranked number six, Adam ranked number three, and we're going to see who's going to come out on top here today. Roxy Stryer has our tail of the tape. What are these nerds good at? Yes, I do. Zipper's strengths are DC, Marvel, and scores and soundtracks, which is definitely not Ooh. a strength of mine. And Adam Flavik is great with Star Wars, DC, and Marvel. So both great with DC and Marvel. But Star Wars being Adam That's how I rock it. The shades over the glasses. Let's the double glasses. Yeah. The middle word today. It's about to go down. Roxy, you ready? Oh, yeah, Mark. Then it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. <laughs> Inner geekdom style. <clears throat> Three rounds to the finish. Introducing first, the challenger. Coming in, the number six. If they do not Inner use this in some way when the MCU takes over the X-Men. Gotta love this song. I'm not gonna do anything, but I'll. It would just be nice. That's it. Hashtag Chris Adams for more. Done no other acting outside of high school and a little bit in college. I'm ready to go for a major motion picture. Yeah. Cheers. Mm -hmm. And his opponent, the number three ranked competitor in the Inner Geekdom Movie Trivia Showdown Division, with a record of two and three with one knockout, please welcome Adam the Haymaker Is that Winter Soldier or Civil War? One of those. I think it's Civil War. And I'm a fan of blowing kisses. He's very good at blowing kisses and wearing sunglasses just on that second button like cool guys do. Oh, I didn't know that that was a sign of that. I'll keep that in mind when I'm looking That's for it. That's Civil War. Totally. Oh, and there they go. It's shades on shades. Rarity. A lot of glasses up there. And back right. to the shirt. And back to the shirt it goes. All right, it's a stunning commentary. This is the inner geek dip division, so you're going to have three rounds. Your first round will be ten questions. Mark, oh Never boy. read a Harry Potter book between the two of us, but we're ready to get here going today. Adam, are you ready? Same. I'm ready. And You've Eric's never read a Harry Zipper Potter book? Ready? Nope. Let's get this over. And you don't read, so I know you didn't read a I've Harry read, Potter book. I've read all 12 of them. That's the biggest lie possible. It's also right, not 12 of them. Asking, the first question will exactly. Be the legend in the movie trivia showdown, Mark Bating Harris. He is a legend. Your first question comes from the world of DC movies. DC movies. And your question is, who directed 1978's Superman? What was an attitude going on? Mm -hmm. Question, uh, received a... a yep. Go to five, four, Hope I have this name right. Three, or even correct. One, fence down Adam. Richard Donner. It was, in fact, Richard Donner. Did Z-Man have it? I mixed him up with the second one, Richard Donner. Okay. Question yep. number Richard two. Donner. Richard Donner. Richard Donner. Look at me go. In Solo, A Star Wars Story, what is the name of Han's girlfriend, played by Amelia Clark? Oh, Solo. Solo. I heard the name is on the tip of my tongue. I don't know much about it. Pen's not good to you first, Z-Man. Kira spelled in a way that fact, totally makes sense. Kira, you almost got the apostrophe in the right place. Did Adam have it? Kira, he also with a weird apostrophe. Uh, he's you still on you is it Darenus? Khaleesi. Yeah. Guessing that's not right. Move on to Middle Earth. Middle Earth. And your question is, in the two towers, Merry and Pippin meet Treebeard 
after escaping the Urukai. What is the name of the forest they escaped to? Sometimes we go by Treebeard. <laughs> I think we should start calling you Treebeard on Collider Live. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Hit five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Eric. Adam, what do you got? Dark Forest, but I don't think that's right. Uh, you are right in that it is not right. Great. Eric Zipper. <laughs> It's definitely called the Forest of Question Mark. <laughs> I can't quite give that to you either. It's Fangorn. It's the Hairy Fangorn. Forest. Yeah, I'm going with Viridian Forest. On, Cody guys. knows what I'm talking about. That was my second choice. Yeah. You need to escape. I grew up on the East Coast, and we all know about Fangorn. Oh, me too. Yeah, of course. I guess Pokemon. it's a Pokemon Gotta thing. Catch him. Pokemon yeah. are heroes and villains. In Watchmen, which member of the Watchmen team has the real name John Osterman? Yep. Um. My name is John Osterman. I'd probably change. Really? Yep. Mm. Five, four, three, two, oh. one. Pens down, Adam. Eric, what do you got? Doctor Manhattan. It was Doctor Manhattan. Ah. Doctor Manhattan. Doctor Manhattan. I knew I should have gone with that. I put Ozymandias. No, it was uh, Adrian. All right, so yeah, I knew I should have gone with Doctor Manhattan. One question. Eric missed two. He's two for four. Three to two. Adam with the early lead here. Your next question comes from the world of Marvel movies. Marvel movies. And your question is, who provides the voice of Juggernaut in Deadpool 2? Oh, was that? Juggernaut. Was it? Who was that, that voice? That's going to be. No. I'm going from Fangorn to Juggernaut. Okay. Yes. Hmm, so was it? Five. Four, Are you going to repeat? I can do that. Who voices Juggernaut in Deadpool 2? Eric's first I season. think. No, I don't think it was this person. It's not my best. That's pretty, that's pretty high. Five, four, three, two, one. Bench down. Going to you, Adam. I believe it's Ryan Reynolds. It is Ryan Reynolds. Does Eric have it? I didn't have it. He did not. Ryan so Reynolds. Now with that, yeah, I put Lee Schreiber. Point lead over Eric Even though I definitely second-guessed on that. Harry Potter. That's what interesting. What is the specific name of the oath <clears throat> Snape makes guaranteeing that he'll protect Draco in the Half-Blood Prince? This is exactly why I don't read these. Uh, but I kind of great, right? It sounds intriguing, don't get me wrong, but God, is it, it just seems dense. It's like a thousand pages. You don't like a good oath? Got eight-year-old reading. Five, four, three, two, one. Eric Zephyr, did you have it? The solemn vow. <laughs> it's a hell of a guess, and it's actually pretty close, yeah, but not no. Too far. Adam. Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> We're I'll actually looking no. for the unbreakable vow. Oh. Uh, I was like Green Lantern Oath. I put Hippocratic in Blackest Night, there. PhD, in Darkest Night. Wow. Trying to be a doctor. This took a turn. Yeah. Wow. Proud tell us, tell us more about your, your personal opinion. life. Simple divorce joke. <laughs> In brightest some day and darkest do. night. Yeah, and, some people. Oh, no. I, I see you. New divorcees here in the house. It's like that meeting. Start talking about Green Lantern Park. when there's a good Green Lantern All movie. Right, move to the world of Star Trek. Star Trek. Name one of the two films in which we see James T. Kirk. Name die one. On Spoiler alert. Yeah. That got the crowd back. He's glossing <laughs> with the whole marriage bit. <laughs> well, that's easy. <laughs> Pretty sure we both put the same one, too. Maybe. Adam, you're up. Star Trek Into Darkness. We can accept Star Trek oh, Into yeah. Darkness. Does Eric have that one? Star Trek Generations. He had the other one. Star Trek hey. Generations. Generations. Love generations. <laughs> Love generations. Star Trek know-how between the two channels. Question 8, my favorite category, DCEU. Shazam is set in what city? Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to say? <clears throat> Shazam. <laughs> But nothing happened. Uh, no. Three. You gotta say it loud. Two. One. Pens down. Go to you, Eric. Philadelphia. It is, in fact, the city of brotherly love. Adam. Philadelphia. He got it with the next. That would be point. Philadelphia. I put Philly. Still works. I'm gonna count that because that's what it's known as. And if you're we know what I'm talking about. Yep. Category in round number one is mixed bag. Could be anything. <clears throat> Good bet that it's a nerd question. What is Count Dooku's Sith name in the Star Wars saga? I'm not to tell you this. Though, uh, like you're born with a name, then you get a Sith name, which is usually...
usually cool in that character? Spelling. <sighs> I do love a good Star Wars question. <clears throat> I love a Star Wars that question. I remember I the question yeah. that they answer to. Yeah. Yes, sir. What is Count Dooku's surname in the Star Wars saga? Jeez. I'm on camera. Come on. <clears throat> I'm okay. He's okay. Tyrannus. It is Darth Tyrannus. I completely blanked. He did not have Darth cool Tyrannus. Tyrannus. Darth Tyrannus. I don't know if there's two wins. Adam Doesn't matter it really, but I did that too. Over. Darth Tyrannus. One yeah. question left in round number one. Roxy, what's our final category? Well, for this final category, it's coming from a patron of ours. Thank you so much mm -hmm. to Jeremy Hastings. JTH. Oh, JTH. Well done, <clears> fellow <throat> reactor. We're going to get another video of him reacting and going, yeah. The category of MCU. Oh, that stands for Marvel Cinematic Facts. Straight, straight facts here. Which MCU film features a post credit scene featuring Captain America talking about exhibiting patience? Uh, just overall, as a person, do you like post credit scenes or do you find it tiresome to sit there with the suit? I need them now. <laughs> Best post credit scene <laughs> ever. No, one of. Four, I'm three, being facetious. Two, it's uh, pretty one. good, though. Did Eric have it? Spider-Man Homecoming. You did have it. He pulls it within two of Adam, unless he got it right as well. Spider-Man Homecoming. Wow. He did. Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Spider Homecoming. Very impressive round number one. I mean, Eric Zipper, he got five out of ten. That's solid. But Adam, eight out of ten. That hey, is a guy I'm tied with Adam. And I'm tied with Zipper. What do you think of that round? I just think that he had to Funny. Two videos in a row where this has happened. Yeah, kind of like that. And he wants Except... That belt. You're going for zipper and I'm going for Adam, so. That's right, and we're seeing the sunglasses hanging ever so gently. Kind of backwards. The second button, just the way God intended. We move on <laughs> to round number two. In round number two, each compare. Uh, you can spin now, or you can defer to Z-Man. What are you feeling? Uh, I'll spin. He's going to spin. All right. He's going to grab it from the wheel, like not the, the pegs. Yeah, the wheel. Never the pegs. He's, he, oh, God, he touched the peg. Should we kick him out? <laughs> <laughs> spin all together, I think though. we need to. I think we need to electrify the pegs. <laughs> you touch them, confirm. That's right. So this could be a spinner's choice here. Ooh. Oh, DC movies. DC movies. Mm. He did He's gonna keep it. it. He needed it as a strength, <clears throat> so I would have been surprised if he had. Keep DC movies, and for that we go to Roxy Stryer. But that could also be a strength of zipper. Question number one. Yeah, but if he's good, then Zipper won't answer it. AKA Porkins, Porkins from Star Wars uh, is this character. Grisham. Grissom. No. Uh, Lieutenant Eckhart. Eckhart, yes. That is correct. Sounds uh, exactly uh, like Gr Gr Grish Grisham. Grisham is uh, Jack My Palance. favorite question in the history of the movie <laughs> Trivia Shmona. Did you guys know that Porkins was also Eckhart? <laughs> yes, I did. It's fantastic. <laughs> The most excited I've seen you all day. <laughs> it's Porkins. Oh, it's Eckhart. The guy's last name is Hootkins. This is great. <laughs> all great pronunciation. Number two. In 1978 fantastic. Superman, after saving Lois from the helicopter crash, Superman apprehends a thief that was trying to steal what? Uh, Mr. Goodbar. Was it a diamond? Oh, yeah. I remember him, like, he's scaling the building. <laughs> Jewelry. Yeah. Broke is laughing somewhere. Jules, jewelry is correct. There we go. Two points. Hey, fun. Jules. Hey, fun fact for you. That actor, that's the thief. He actually plays uh, Thomas Wayne in Batman '89. That was oh, just showing off. God, I thought you were gonna go back to Hootkins, and I was about to lose my mind. <laughs> Same movie. Question three. It all ties Who in the Hootkins. The Green Lantern, Tomar Ray. Uh, Lantern Jeffrey Rush. First yes. Did how on Oa. I believe that's Jeffrey Rush. You would be right. I believe you're correct. <laughs> Jeffrey Rush. I was thinking, who was also in a movie with William Hootkins. I was came to Six Degrees of William Hootkins. In 2009's Watchmen, what is the name of the newspaper to which Rorschach um, sends his journal? Oh. The Daily... Yes, you can. Is it A... Daily News. No. E, New Frontiersman. New, C, New Frontiersman sounds right. Today. D. New Frontiersman. Okay. 
correct. So Roxy's going to read the options again for Eric, just so you have him for the possible steal. Because they also show him getting delivered to the uh, the newsstand in the comics, the newsstand where the kid is reading yeah. uh, tales from the. That is correct for one point. That was cool. Steal, yeah, he said to deep. Tales from the Black Freighter, I believe, was the comic the kid was reading. Yeah. At the beginning of 2006's Superman Returns, how many years Seven. has Superman been gone? Six years? Incorrect. Five years. Five years is correct. Okay. I was thinking either seven or five, and I was trying to remember how old the kid was. Yeah. Those first three questions, the last two, Eric suddenly steps up. He zipped that one up. Am I getting better? That was a really good analogy to his last name. All right, Z-Man, now you have a spin at the wheel, though you've already been answering some questions correct. Spinning from the wheel, not the pegs. That was a crazy round. Well, let's not forget, Adam's certainly capable of stealing a few questions on his own, so Eric can't afford a trip up here. Without a doubt. This looks like DCEU. Is he going to keep it? He's holding his his mouth closed. DC <coughs> so he wants to scream something. Do it! Peer pressure from the crowd. He's wow. going to spin again! Spinning again. He's going to spin again. A lot of dangerous things on there he could hit now. I got a Hashtag shy of surprise. He fears the DCEU too much. I just think he sees something that he might want a little bit more. Which is? That could be Harry Potter and... Judging by the look on his face, I'm not sure that's the category he wanted. I, I don't think so. Not a, not a strength, but at least not listed. So, Harry Potter, what did me and Harry It's not the category we wanted either. Have a scar in our face Whatever, this is where we show off our skills. <laughs> All right, Harry. <clears throat> Pay attention to people. This is how you don't Five answer questions, questions correctly. In the world of Mr. Potter. <laughs> and your first question. Which one of Ron Weasley's brothers works with dragons? The one with the red hair. Nice. Jenny. Bill. Excuse me? Bill? Brothers, never mind. It's not Jenny. (laughs) George? (laughs) By the way, we're brothers? He's my sister. Got to it before you did. Ha! That's what I was kind of implying. Dragon bit my finger! It really hurt! Got a real life dragon in the studio right here. Or you, you, you can't manufacture that kind of magic. <laughs> All right. Your next question in the world of Harry Potter. What brand of wizarding candy includes a collectible card of a famous witch or wizard in every box? Multiple choice. Is it A, Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, mm. B, Chocolate Frogs, C, Pumpkin Pastry, Fizzing, fizzing Wisbees, Chocolate Frogs. Uh, chocolate Frogs. It is Chocolate Frogs Doesn't for a point. point. I remember those actually being a thing. Like I was in a Willy Wonka movie for a minute there. Schnozberries right. taste like Schnozberries. You can buy them in candy Very shops in real life. In the world of Harry Potter, uh, your next question. In the Goblet of Fire, who did Neville Longbottom take to the Yule Ball? Jenny. The one with the red hair. <laughs> Eventually, this will be right. <laughs> St- statistically. Uh, is it A, Anna Abbott, B, Parvati Paddle, C, Lavender Brown, or I mean, B, Ginny Weasley? I mean, Ginny Weasley? Give the man a point. I mean, so yeah. Sorry. Technically, there's that counter use gift. Yeah. The one that's really popular right now. <clears throat> yeah. Tied with Adam, but he's got to Always be my Jenny. Correct on their nose, and your next one is a Hufflepuff values hard work, patience, and loyalty. What animal? Oh, is it's an elephant mascot. No, it's not. Badger. It's a badger. It's a badger. Uh, it's a badger. I was thinking the heffalumps from like <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. The <laughs> I'm like, eh, sounds like it. And this could pull him even with Adam as the crowd gets very antsy with this last query. <laughs> In the world of Harry Potter. I swear, dogs love me. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Wow. Does Horace Slughorn disguise himself as whilst trying to hide from Harry and Dumbledore when they come to ask him to teach again? A rock? A bush? 
a tree. A, a recliner, a reclining chair. Ladies and gentlemen, we are tied. That was my next guess. Wow. Nice. Believe it or not, nice. that was my next guess. That was my next guess. Face when he found out he was That's a have to good one. I would not have expected that performance. Yeah. And he pulled through at the end there too with getting those last two questions for two. We questions. now have ourselves a barn burner. Oh yeah. His last couple questions. Adam got his last couple questions stolen from America. Now we find ourselves tied. Have you ever burned a barn before? Nope. Good way to make s'mores. Arson. In which mm. each favorite in today's match. So which three numbers between one and sixteen? Feel lucky to you, good sir. <clears throat> um, two, six, and fourteen. Two, six, and fourteen. And Z-Man Zipper, you're tied with Adam. What are your lucky numbers? Three, eight, and nine. Eight and nine. All right, Eric, you're gonna have your question first. It's gonna be administered by this guy, and you selected number three for your two-point question, and that corresponds to the world of the MCU. MC. He's like, cool. And your question. What two main characters does Loki recruit to his side using his... Hawkeye, Hawkeye and Selvig. Selvig, yeah. Dummy and you. Avengers. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hawkeye and Eric Selvig. Give the man two points and the lead. So now we bounce over to Adam. Adam. Now, you have to answer your two-point question. You selected number two. Roxy, what does that correspond to? The category is The Hobbit. For two points, what TV personality and a well-known Tolkien fan makes a brief cameo as a Lake Town spy in the desolation of Smaug? Kim Kardashian. I don't know. <laughs> Stephen Colbert. Wow. Really yeah, I should have known there. that one. Oh, that makes sense. He got it for two points. <laughs> Still want to see an exhibition sure of him Adam versus Rachel and Lord of the Rings the questions. Still want to see yeah. Kim Kardashian right, in a Hobbit no, movie. Not at all. 16, not even you close. Number eight for your three-point question, and that corresponds up here. The answer is to Lord of the Rings. These were made even before the Hobbit movies. <laughs> nice. And your question. Nice. Three points. The title The Two Towers refers to which two towers according to the movies? The first and second one? The big one and the slightly smaller one. Um, one of them has the eye on it. Uh, Isengard and the Eye of Sauron. That is incorrect. Looking for Orthanc and Baradur. Orthanc and Baradur. My next guess. <laughs> It was on All the right, tip so of my Eric, tongue. I don't think I could have gotten it right, considering you just made those words up. Mm. His three, <laughs> I, I just made those words up. All right, so now you know, I have Eric, to slide with zipper on that one. It's true. This is your five-pointer, and if you hit it, you're going to force the hand of Adam to answer either his three and or his five. You selected number nine for your five-pointer, and that corresponds to the world you spun away from in round number two, DC. Okay. Fair. And your question is, this actress played Martha Kent, Superman's adoptive mother in two thousand. Not Diane Lane. Superman no. That was Man of Steel. Oh, um Who's in Superman Returns? I tried to forget yes. that movie. Uh how what? many JTEs do I have left? Uh you have one left. Really? Five, oh I see her face. Four, three. Oh. I had a feeling you'd spend it. This actress played Martha Kent, Superman's adoptive mother. She's like a she's a classic actress. I see her now too. I think I'm thinking of Smallville, but Annette O'Toole. That's Can Smallville. For Eva Marie Saint. Eva Marie Saint. Sorry. That's it. Eva Marie Saint is the actress. So, with that, Eric is tied. <clears throat> Hasn't lost anything yet. <laughs> yeah. But Annette O'Toole Adam was the mom in Smallville, Smallville. Yeah. and Lana Lang in Superman Three. Hey, there's a poll. So you selected number six. The category is heroes. Okay. In Thor, during the fight against Loki at the end of the film, how did Thor keep him on the bridge? Oh, put his hammer on top of him. He knocked him down and put Mjolnir over his chest. Yep. Yeah. And your winner, Adam Lovett! Wow. Yep. Eric Z-Man said for what a match for the Hayes. 
I got one right. He got it right. He right at the, the end. Thing on the guy's chest, yep. And that is how he put the thing on the guy's <laughs> chest. <laughs> We're on camera. <laughs> All kinds of explosions <laughs> happening out of our faces tonight. You tuned in to the right reaction. <laughs> Anything <laughs> nerdy and nasty. <laughs> Anything hanging out of my nose? Yeah. Who knows more about the inner geek? Okay. Well, today it was Adam, and on a future day it might I'm be. So Eric. sorry. We are going to have an interview to myself. with Eric and Adam, the loser and the winner, respectively, of today's match with our own Jen Sturger. Jen, it's all yours. What's up, movie trivia showdown fans? Jen Sturger here with Eric Zipper. <sighs> I feel like you came out in this mood and you're still in it. Yeah, I'm just, t I'm tired, Jen. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of having a, a record that doesn't reflect how good I am at this game. It really doesn't because I'm you have so much knowledge, especially when it comes to inner geekdom. But I mean, you had your breakup with your teammate and now <sighs> this inner geekdom loss. Like, how do we regroup from this? Well, I mean, as loath as I am to put faith in Kaiser, uh, I'm hoping that in teams, uh, things will start looking up for me. The... Yeah, how's that? How's that working out with that whole hip pocketing thing, or whatever he calls it? Yeah, it wasn't a term I was familiar with either because sports. But uh, I hope it goes well. It's I, we I understand that sentiment. In, in sentiment. Paul and I winning our first match, I think that we are going to be a scary team. I don't disagree yeah. with that at all. So like, we're going to talk about moving forward and getting back on the board. Who do you want next? Well, you know. I want to take on somebody that I respect, somebody in this game that, like, if I'd beaten Adam today, I would have felt really good about it because I respect him as a player. He's good at what he does. <clears throat> so I would really <laughs> like to take on Haley Fouch and the Screen Queens. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, Haley and I were friends. We were on a team together in Anarchy uh, last year, and uh, I think that would make me feel better going forward because... It's so weird she because someone stuff. had told me that you were that you were like kind of talking behind the scenes that you wanted to take on Mike or Chance, which I think is a little crazy, personally. Oh, I definitely want to take on Mike and Chance. Corruption is my ultimate goal. Trust me. You just feel like you might They're need another goal. another win or two under your belt before you feel comfortable with that. Well, I wouldn't necessarily put it that way, but wouldn't hurt. Hmm. Wouldn't hurt. Well, tough loss today, man. Sorry. Yeah, you're telling me. Oh, we'll get you back in there. We'll get you back in there. All right? Shut up. Thanks. And I'm back with a very happy Adam Lavic. Oh, my gosh. How does it feel to be back in the wins column? It's great. I love it. Uh, this was a really, really fun match. This was a match that played into all of my strengths. So I knew as soon as these questions started coming out, I was like, oh, this is this feels good. I feel good about this. I feel pretty confident about about winning this. Isn't it some days that's just how it goes? Hey, absolutely. And in this morning, I was I'm always a little stressed before I do these because you never know what, what's going to get thrown at you. So I always always assume the worst. And usually when I assume the worst, I tend to usually win. So maybe that's my tactic going going forward. Thoughts on Zipper and how he played out there today? Did great. Uh, you know, I didn't really know too much about him as a performer in this match. So it, I, I love coming into this and not knowing what to expect. And everyone thinking... So you don't kind of like overthink it, basically. Not at all. And, and it's so funny to come into this and have a lot of people sort of assume it's going to be landslide sometimes. I'm like, well, you should never underestimate anybody because underdogs, when they win, they usually do it extremely well and they landslide. So it was it was a great match. He's a great opponent. And he handled DC movie news pretty well. He did get those steals on you, though. He did. And that's my fault for not going with my gut. Uh, both of those questions, Let's Watchmen, I, I agree 100%. Both Superman Returns and Watchmen, I went against my gut, and I paid for it. So, lesson learned, go with your gut always. Always. And so, who are we going with next? I mean, there's so many, there's such an open field right now, I feel yeah. like, in inner geekdom. <laughs> He's like, Smets. All roads <laughs> to get to Rachel Cushing at Comic-Con. <laughs> which which path do you want to take? Because I feel like any of them are going to be awful right now. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with going to the trenches and just going straight through the fire and going after Kalinowski and then going to Cushing. Those were two incredible opponents, 
and I feel very honored that I got to play against them. Uh, regardless of what the outcome was, it was just so great to play against people who are so passionate, so prepared. They really know their stuff. I, I think they really need to be looked at as some of the greatest players in this entire uh, schmodown. So I just kind of want to go straight into the fire. Nice. I love that. I love that you are just ready to be back in that title hunt, man. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you so much. And uh, can't wait to see what we have cooked up for you next. Thank you. All right, so Roxy, you see there Eric still kind of feeling his way around who he is in this league. But let's talk about Adam Lavik and how he really is taking aim at that belt. This is a big win here today against a fellow top 10 competitor in the inner geekdom. How do you see Eric matricul excuse me, how do you see Adam matriculating to getting that matchup possibly one day against Rachel Cushing? Do you think he has the goods? I do think that he's just grown and grown and I don't know where he will stop because what we watched today and what we've seen from him so far, this guy is a an amazing competitor, especially in inner geekdom. He has so much knowledge. And if I can just ask you, because you're a fellow man, if you're looking at Eric Zipper's performance, right? And again, I hate to do this. I'm going to put you in Kaiser's shoes. You watch this match play out here today. Eric Zipper showed some moxie. He showed a lot of know-how in a variety of different categories, even categories he didn't necessarily want. He struggled with Harry Potter, but he managed to get points. Are you looking at this as somebody you can manage here today? He didn't give up, and I do like that, but he came in with the wrong attitude. You've got to come to play for the belt, and I would never manage a single player who wasn't there for one reason, and that reason is to get the belt. It is calling out corruption, maybe getting a little sidetracked and not having his sights singularly focused like what we've seen with Adam on getting that belt. Well, that does it here today. Once again, your winner is Adam the Haymaker, Lavic defeating Eric Z-Man Zipper. I want to give a big shout-out to everybody here in the studio, all of our hardworking crew, the camera. Camera operators, everybody, you can give them a hand at any time you want, studio audience. And I also want to thank my incredible co-announcer, Roxy Stryer. Where can all the kids out there find you? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. I'm merely Mark Ellis. Like at McDonald's? Mark Ellis Live. At I'm Roxy Stryer. Oh. San Diego Comic-Con. I'm doing stand-up at American Comedy Company with some of my funny nerd friends. Thursday of Comic-Con. Then Saturday is the big movie trivia Schmodown event. You can get your tickets right now at the Schmodown Live or Mark Ellis Live. Dot com. Until then, for everybody here, Roxy, Christian, I'm merely Baby Carrots, and we'll see you next time. Can I come? <laughs> nice. Whitney. Hey, Mr. Beauty. How's it going? Hey, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love Field Geek Claim. And who, who are, who are my you? Favorite team. Uh, I'm Brendan. I'll, we'll call me the kid. Oh, you're the kid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. it's, it's yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, the kid. Total pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, I just want to say I'm a huge fan of the team. I've watched all Cruelty Acclaims Claims matches. I've been pulling for you. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's stop, 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 stop. Me? Stop. Hmm? So you're, you're a big fan, yeah. Yeah, no, I love your team. And just lately, Mr. Beast has been giving me so much advice. And he helped me out before my match, uh, singles match. And yeah. Wait, Will, William's been giving you advice. Uh -oh. Yeah. Mr. Beast, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Ooh. I think Mr. Beast is another YouTuber, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he likes to give money to homeless people. Yeah. Um, so, do we potentially see some uh, a disruption of Critically Acclaimed about to happen? Yeah. Call their team Critically Inflamed. Mm, possibly. Inflammation. That means something different. Never mind. Uh, hey, so that was a match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just move on. Here we go. All right. That was a good match there between Lavic and Zipper. Yep, fantastic match. Um, it's kind of like we were saying before that you feel like, like they're I both... meant I meant flames, like fire. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like we were mentioning. I mean, I guess both of them give you a burning sensation. That's nice. Do we need to get you some medication? No, we're good. Okay. This is way too much about bodily stuff tonight. <laughs> uh, we mentioned before that both of these players seem to be pretty evenly matched. And I think that just kind of proves what we thought going into this, that they were pretty evenly matched. Yeah. Had Zipper gotten the right question there for his fifth question, or even his third question there, his third point, three-pointer and five-pointer is what I mean. Spit it out. Yeah. That... This could have gone like right to the last question because yeah. it really was neck and neck there. Yeah, well, for I mean, for a while there, Adam was looking like he was he was going to be in prime uh, KO position, mm -hmm. and then Zipper 
fun Harry Potter was like, eh. But he still did well. But plowed through it, got it tied by the end of that, which was which is actually a really good performance. So mm-hmm. that's to say, like, Zipper is strong in inner geekdom, and so I think it's it just comes down to just getting his head in the right space. Yeah. Um, in this case, maybe don't worry about corruption as much as, like Roxy was saying, worry about getting those wins. Try to chase after that belt. Mm-hmm. Focus on that. Get your strategy down. Get your studying down. And you're going to be good to go. Build your confidence up. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd be doing very well. So, yeah, kind of eager to see what we're going to see from both of them. Uh, I know uh, Lavik was talking about how he wants to go for Kalinowski and Cushing. But and this might be like a, a byproduct of when the episode was actually filmed. But <laughs> at this point, at this exact moment, <laughs> he's also going to have to go through Smets. Which yeah. I don't think... I think Smets is kind of looking more towards the future. And Smets having to fight... Uh, Halavik might be a step back from him. So he's looking at yeah. what we've already seen and what we've heard that's laid out is Smets is going for Kalinowski and then and Cushing. Cushing. So after he gets a chance at Kalinowski and Cushing, then we could possibly come back and see what happens in regards to Halavik maybe continuing that climb as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, as far as that goes, Smets will beat Kalinowski, then he'll take on Cushing. At that point, if he beats Cushing, that's when he'll get the chance to fight Hlavik, when Hlavik gets to that point by going through Kalinowski, and mm-hmm. possibly Cushing as well. So there's a lot to happen before Hlavik and Smets would even face off. Now, if Smets doesn't beat Kalinowski, then that's what you got. Um, so, I mean, that's that's in Regitum. As far as... Let's talk about that beginning cutscene real quick. Dagnino trying to earn Roka's trust. Here's my prediction. That's going to turn into Dagnino putting Roka in that manager bowl, mm-hmm. representing him in that manager bowl. And so the other half of my sentence I was saying is, this is going to be pretty interesting to see these two really ba- like bump heads. And we saw this like at the Houston Live event where we're like, well, wait a minute, Roka's still pretty much the leader of the Five Horsemen, but we got Dagnino, who's pretty much only job is to be a coach. Yeah. So... Yeah, this will be pretty interesting to see how that turns out. I, th- so. I think that's I think that's going to be it, though. I think that's how you're going to see that trust earned is, hey, I trust you enough to represent me in the manager bowl. Therefore, there you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's my prediction. Anyways, uh, did you like the Schmodown? Go over to the Movie Trivia Schmodown YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's somewhere over, I guess, in that direction. Not that one, this direction. That direction. I don't know why. (laughs) What did you think of our reaction? Let us know down below. Feel free to comment. We would like to talk to you down in the comments. Did you like the video? Hit like. Also, up above our heads, there is a subscribe button. Over here off to the side are a couple other videos that we have made. And as always, it's Song of the South, the movie of Song of the South. Yeah, it was. Good guess. Later. See ya. All right, we will never talk about that movie ever again on this channel. Nope.